Good evening, everyone. Uh, good day. So today, um, Lena will be talking to us about uh, machine learning in Power BI. So, um, let, so machine learning is a branch in artificial, artificial intelligence and computer science, which focus on the use of data algorithms to imitate the way humans learn and to in gradually also improve accuracy. So today, um, Lena will, will talk to us about how we can use this to solve. To make data driven instruction, data driven um, decisions within our apps and within our businesses. How can use this also to automate predict models in Power BI using Python? So, Leno, you can take the stage. Fantastic. Thank you very much for that great introduction. And hello to everybody um, within the user group. It's a pleasure for me to be here with you. Um, and as Feani said, I'm going to speak to you about machine learning in Power BI. As we mentioned, we do want this to be a very interactive session. So if you do have any questions throughout, then please do not hesitate um, to ask them. OK, so hopefully you can all see my presentation. Not yet. <laughs> not yet. Let me. Okay. Uh, Leon, we are not yet seeing yours. Okay, no. try to shine again. Yeah, no problem at all. Can you see my screen now? Yes. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Sick. Okay, so as I mentioned, we're going to talk through machine learning in Power BI. So before we do that, just a little bit about me. Um, so I recently became a Microsoft uh, Most Valuable Professional, so an MVP. Um, I own and operate um, as a freelance consultant under a company called Onyx Data. Um, and I'm also the chair of the Microsoft Power BI UK user group. So please do feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn um, to go to my company's website, onyxdata.co.uk. And of course, please do feel free to come and join um, us at the Power BI UK user group. We also host regular webinars whereby we continue to put content and, and learn within the community as well. So I look forward to seeing you all there in the near future, hopefully. OK, so in today's session, we're going to cover um, first and foremost, we're going to look at what is machine learning um, or the common acronym of ML, which you'll hear me use throughout. Uh, how can we benefit from ML in Power BI? Uh, how to create a, a machine learning model in Power BI? We're going to look at some of the tools that we need, and then we're going to look at an external tool called PyCharm um, so to create a solution within Power BI also. And we're going to look at some resources after that to be able to continue our learning. So first and foremost, what is machine learning? So obviously machine learning has been um, a term that's been used quite a lot within a data space and especially the data science um, space within recent years. But machine learning is defined as a data analytics technique that teaches computers to do what comes naturally to humans and animals, and that is to learn from experience. Machine learning algorithms use computational methods to learn information directly from data without relying on a predetermined and, um, equation um, within within the model. So some of the key takeaways from that definition of machine learning is that we're going to use a computer or guide a computer to learn from experience. And we're also going to learn the information directly from our data. So let's take a brief, a brief look at the history of machine learning, some of which I'm sure um, that some of you are already familiar with. So machine learning actually dates back to around the 1940s. Uh, there was a gentleman called Arthur Samuel, who was a computer scientist at IBM and a pioneer in the AI, AI and computer gaming. And he coined the term machine learning in 1952. So Arthur also designed a computer program for playing checkers. The more the program played the game, the more it learned from its experience. Now, this is, again, really key concepts to start to understand in regards to machine learning is that it's very much an iterative process of learning by experience. OK, um, and he also developed an algorithm called the Minimax al uh, algorithm. So it didn't take off um, until the late 1990s when IBM actually developed um, a supercomputer called Deep Blue. And this supercomputer, Deep Blue, went on to beat the world champion uh, Gary Kasparov in 1997. 
So let's take a look at the evolution of machine learning. And it's not quite right of the robots and the robots are going to take over us and we're going to be governed um, by computers in the future. Um, but again, if we look at some key events um, over the last 60, 70 odd years uh, within machine learning. So there was a gentleman called Donald Hebb and he published um, the organization of behavior. And if you haven't um, if you have if you're not familiar with with the organization of behavior then i suggest that you that you do take a look um as again i'm sure you're aware in 1950 alan turing invented the turing test um, and as previously mentioned arthur samuel developed the computer game um, that could play checkers and in 1979 stanford students built the stanford cart which was a remotely controlled autonomous cart so now that we're looking at things like autonomous vehicles the likes of um, of tesla nvidia and even google entering that space uh, it was actually first designed in 1979 by some students from stanford um, again as previously mentioned uh, in 1997, IBM supercomputer beat uh, Gary Kasparov in chess. In 2012, Google developed um, a machine learning algorithm, Google Brain, uh, which was used for recognizing cats in images and videos. And in 2014, Facebook created DeepFace, uh, which is a facial recognition system capable of detecting faces in images and accurately identifying humans. Uh, we fast forward to 2016 and Google's AI powered AlphaGo um, beat a professional player in Go, which is a very hard and abstract um, strategy board game um, that I, for one, can't play, let alone be a world champion in. OK, so what we're going to look at now is now that we've got a firm understanding of what machine learning is um, and some of the history behind machine learning, we're going to look at how we can start to benefit from some of these techniques in Power BI. OK, now some of these um, benefits are fast processing times, real time predictions. Uh, we can also start to look at um, particularly customer trends as well. So we can start to look at things like um, customer churn analysis. So this is the propensity for customers to cancel. Um, custom, we can start to look at customer leads and conversion. So for our customer bases, which ones are going to be more than likely to purchase our products? Um, and we can look at things like predicting fraud as well. Um, so this is this is really big concept in banking um, and also a lot of companies uh, that do any retail work or have internal employees to start to be able to predict if or if and when a fraud may may take place. So we're going to get into a bit of an interactive part of the session now. Um, so to look at how we can use machine learning in Power BI. Um, before I do so, Effiani and, and Michael, are there any um, questions currently? Um, no, there are no questions. No questions. Okay, perfect. So we're just going to switch over and hopefully um, you can see the Power BI service now. Yes, 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 we do. Yes. Perfect, fantastic. So uh, we're in a workspace which I have here, which is called Sandbox. And this is a premium uh, workspace with a dedicated capacity using um, premium per user currently. And what we're going to do is we're going to look first and foremost at how to make an automated uh, machine learning model um, within, within Power BI uh, service. So first and foremost, we want to look at creating a new data flow. OK. And just bear with this a moment while it just loads up. Hopefully my um, my broadband stands up. OK, perfect. Um, so we're, good. we're going to um, look to define a new table within our new data flow. So we're going to go to add new tables. And in this instance, we're going to use a text and CSV um, data source. Now, the data source I'm going to use for um, for this for this demonstration um, is actually a data uh, a data set that's based on um, customer shopping um, experiences, and we're going to connect to this based on the URL, which I'm happy to share um, after after the session. Um, we're just going to hit next. Okay, and it doesn't like my credentials. Okay, we may need to refresh. 
the Power BI service has been playing up a little bit today from on my end. I don't know if it has been the same for anybody else. In the fact that it won't refresh at the moment also. So right, refresh. We'll go back to our workspace. If not, I do actually have a version of this prepared, but it'll be nice to work through actually on the fly as well. So we try that again, sandbox. We'll have a new data flow. And again, we'll try that again, new data flow. No, we won't recover it, we'll start a new one. We'll add a new table. OK, and as again, I previously mentioned, we'll use a text CSV. We will bring this in from a URL rather than a file path. OK, so what I'll do, I'll just revert to the one that we already have created. Because we shouldn't need to do any info authentication here. OK, so what we would have done was we would have added a new table which would have held our data information. And we would have given it a name. So at that point, we would have a data flow created, which I already have here called ML1. OK, and in, inside ML1. We can see that we have our query. OK, so this query is a data set that I previously mentioned um, that wasn't able to just be imported for me. OK, so we can see all of our columns here within the service. And our next step would be to look at this brain option here with a lightning strike and start to look to apply an ML model. So what we'll do here is we'll add a new machine learning model. OK, and we can see that it's against our query table and our outcome column. In this instance will be. Revenue, OK. We'll go to next. And what Power BI does at this moment is it, it, it asks you to go for, or it actually recommends to you, which type of machine learning uh, model you would like to apply to this underlying data set. Now here it's recommended something called classification, which we'll look at later on in the session. But what we're looking to achieve with this underlying data set is we're looking to identify a propensity of people to purchase um, a product from our from our online retail store. So with this being the case, the type of class, the type of um, model that we, we want to apply by going to select a different model is a binary prediction. OK, it mentions here a binary prediction is used to determine the likelihood of a sales lead converting or the probability of a customer responding to a campaign. So this is absolutely perfect for what we're trying to achieve here. So we'll just select this. OK, and then what it asks us to do is to choose a target outcome. OK, now what we want to identify is if this is true, so is a is a customer likely to make a purchase with us? Is it going to be true? OK, so we'll select true and what we're looking to do is match on a label. So in this case, we want to rename this to purchase. Next screen, we want to be. No purchase if there is a mismatch. Uh, see here, we'll then select next. OK, now what Power BI in a service does is it gives us a list of um, the columns that are available within within our data set. So what we want to do is select the data within our model that we would like to study. So Power BI, um, based on um, a sample of the data, selected the columns that it feels that we should use. Um, but what we're, what we're actually going to do is choose our own columns. So we're going to deselect everything and we're going to use a column called administrative, administrative duration, informational duration. And we're also going to look at, um, I believe it's product related um, duration. We actually want information as opposed to information duration. OK, so we've got our three columns that we are going to feed into 
um, our Power BI machine learning model to determine if a customer is likely to have made a purchase or to not make a purchase. We're going to go to next. OK, uh, we can give our model a model name here, so I'm just going to call it um, customer purchase for this demo. Um, we're going to look at the training time. So in this example, um, you can train your model for, for any time up to 360 minutes um, or anything down to um, one minute. But we're going to use five minutes for this. And then Power BI will tell you what it will do next. OK, so it will take a, statist a statistically significant sample of the data and train the model using 80 percent of the data. So a sample data set with the purpose of training the model. It will then use the additional 20 percent of the model to test the model. OK, and go over the prediction accuracy within a report. And then we can then use this 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 uh, data set um, within our reports or to pipe data through um, our data flow in the future. OK, so at this point we select save and train and the Power BI service will go away and start to train. Um, as we can see here, our ML1 is starting to be trained. Now, hopefully what I can do rather than us, us sit here and wait for that to happen is I have a report which was previously um, so I've previously trained this model and once that once the training is complete Power BI will present back to you something um, called your prediction report okay now I would just zoom out of this slightly so that you can all see um, what Power BI presents back to you so it will tell you in the top left hand side of the screen here um, how the model was evaluated. OK, so we can see that Power BI took a test set of 2,471 records and predicted um, the outcomes uh, based on our selected threshold. OK, so we start to look through this and we can see um, that we have our predicted purchase, predicted no purchase columns with some information around an actual purchase and an actual no purchase. Cool. We can also see. Sorry, was there a question there? Um, no. Oh, oh, sorry. I have one question. Uh, okay, so um, during we are picking the columns, you pick some particular columns. Is there a reason why you pick? You didn't do like you didn't you didn't also do analysis to know the columns you should go for it. Was there a reason you pick those particular columns? Was it just for yeah, the it Indeed. So this this is solely for this session. But what I what I would say, and when you're when you're doing this um, alongside a business or a business use case or even training, what you want to identify within your data set is the information that is most likely to achieve your goal. So in in the information that we've currently got, we're looking to understand how many of our our customers are going to make a purchase or not make a purchase. So we need to look at attributes within our data set that quantify uh, whether a customer is going to make a purchase or not. So this could be information like duration spent on a on a website. Is a customer more likely to spend um, time on a, on, a, on a website to make a purchase than the likelihood that they're only going to be on there for a short period of time? We can look at customers that return um, to a website in, 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 in short spaces of time as well. So I think that the columns that you select are very much down to the underlying data and the goal that you're trying to achieve uh, with your machine learning model. OK, um, hopefully that answers your question. So with um, we can see here also that Power BI gives us a precision percentage as well, which is the the, the, the number of records predicted um, to be purchases um, that are actually likely to be a purchase. OK, so this is a really important uh, metric for us to bear in mind. And we have um, a recall metric as well, which is again the, the percentage of records that are actually purchased that are likely to be predicted as a purchase. Now, what Power BI does is it does give us the opportunity to either increase our recall or increase our precision. Now, again, you can move this backwards and forwards depending on what you're looking to achieve, either a higher increase um, of precision in terms of uh, records that are records that are predicted to be purchases um, against actually being purchases or the increase of recall. So I would say you need to adjust this and, and spend some time to tune this um, based on again your data needs. And at this point you can also go through and see some, some, some accuracy. 
um, some accuracy reports and also uh, some training details. So this will give you a bit more insight into what Power BI actually did in the background um, within the model to train um, to train the data set. OK, so with that being the case, um, at this moment in time, we have a, uh, a data set which has been trained and we can hopefully go back and see this if if Power BI is um, is playing well with me today. Um, by going to our data flow, it, I'm hoping it lets us even though it's still currently refreshing. We have um, an additional table created here, which is um, sorry, our query enriched purchase intent prediction. OK, now within here. We can see that we have some additional columns um, on top of our underlying data, so we can start to look at an explanation index. Um, a prediction, the actual outcome, the prediction score, the explanation, the result, um, and it will do this based on again the the output of your machine learning model. Now, at this point, once you have a refreshed data set um, and you've applied your machine learning, this information um, can be ingested into a Power BI report and presented just the same as any other um, information or as with um, as it, as uh, which is the case with with data flows, you can set this up so that it can be an automated process. So once this is actually applied to your data flow, um, Power BI will continually um, run predictions against the underlying data set every time you refresh a data flow. So if you can imagine you have more information being ingested into um, your Power BI data flow, this prediction model will just recur every time it's refreshed um, with any new data um, that's added, but also with existing data as well. So quite powerful straight out of the box. And as I mentioned, I'll just do a quick connection to um, let's do a new. Um, a new file briefly. And we will connect to uh, the data flow, which hopefully again, as it's as it's refreshing, I'm hoping the information will be cached and it will allow us to see um, some of these new columns as well. Uh, just while this loads, are there, are there any further questions at this point? Oh, I don't have some questions. OK, so three questions, uh, Leon, and um, one is, I noticed you used the premium per user, like the, you used the workspace that seemed to already be assigned a premium, uh, a premium license. Let me use that word. Uh, can can this work in a normal pro license workspace? No, so with, with this with this technology, uh, you need to use a dedicated capacity, which is only available in either a premium, um, a premium workspace or a premium per user license. OK, what I will go on to show you later on in the session um, is a method of applying uh, machine learning, which doesn't rely um, on a um, on a on, on a premium uh, capacity or a premium per user uh, license. Oh, great. It seems you already answered another my third question, which was you know, if we want to use the Python and the Power BI desktop, you know, could that work? So maybe I'll just uh, say the second question I have in mind is uh, from the, for me, maybe because I, I'm comfortable with digging around, but I noticed that for, or I suspect that for others, that break in between how to bring in the table in and um, especially those who might be watching later the recorded session and are not too familiar with Power BI. I don't know if you have another data set that you could just uh, be able to show us how to bring in data to that Power BI yeah, set. Yes, so I, I, think, I think the problem at the moment is, is actually with the service. So I've been spending some time on this this afternoon. And as, as, you, as you probably saw, even when I'm clicking on buttons in the service, it, the service isn't responding. Um, so what I'm happy to do following this session is supply you with um, maybe a Word document which just has this few screen grabs of how that process looks. Um, but rather than take time away from the session with something that potentially won't work. Um, I get you. If, the, if, the, if, if that's OK. Yes, it's very it's, generous. It's, 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 it's unfortunate, but sometimes when you're doing these presentations, um, things don't go as, as planned. So I'm happy to supply that to you after the session. 
Thank you very much. No problem at all. OK, so uh, what we're going to do is look to get data um, and there's two ways that we can do this when we're looking for a data flow. We can either look at the power platform um, which gives us a subcategory of, our, of um, all of the power uh, platform data sources of which the Power BI data flows are one. Or alternatively, you could just type data flows or Power BI or Power BI data flows into this box. OK, so we're going to look at connecting to a Power BI data flow. OK, uh, so what this does, it automatically looks at my sandbox workspace, which is the workspace that we've just been um, applying this model to. Um, we can look at the ML1 data flow. And as I mentioned in, in this example, and there are a few more here at the moment because we do have one that's currently, um, the, the one that we've just created is currently refreshing. But what we'll do is we'll look at um, our query enriched purchase intent prediction, okay? Now, by selecting that, we should get a preview of the underlying data within this data set. So we can see our columns um, that existed uh, previously, but we can also start to see our additional columns, which are which are prefixed uh, with the purchase intent prediction. OK, so in this example, we can see that we have the outcome. So a false outcome, which means um, no purchase. And it'll also be um, some 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 values within that column which have a true outcome. So this is this is based on our machine learning model, learning from the underlying data set, which um, customer is likely to to have a purchase or a non purchase. And as we saw earlier, this is a binary prediction. So we are, we are either returned a false or a true. Now. At this moment, what I would always recommend um, if you were doing this in a live setting is going through and transforming your data to make sure that your data types are correct. Um, always try and apply any transformations as close to the data source as you can. Uh, but in an effort to, to save some time, because we do have a bit to get through, I'm just going to load this data in. OK. Again, with the with the service being slightly temperamental today, I'm hopeful that the data will load successfully. If not, we do have a backup to revert to. Um, and as always, we can see that we have our information uh, now being pulled now being pulled into uh, into Power BI, which again, as I mentioned, we can start to um, either evaluate and pull into our table. So we can look at these options here. So these are our our new columns and for example we can look at something like um, let's go with administrative duration maybe informational okay so what we can start to see within our table is the output that we've just that we've just got from our machine learning model okay so we have our prediction scores here we have our prediction explanation and usually you wouldn't use this uh, within the visualization. It's just me showing you what the output is and we have our prediction outcome here, uh, which for these values is false. And then we've just applied some additional um, data from within our data set. Um, so again, administrative duration, uh, another piece of information from the machine learning model, which is an explanation index. Again, you wouldn't use this uh, really from a visualization perspective, but we can see that having applied um, our auto um, machine learning model within the Power BI service and pushing it through and refreshing our, our data flows, the output um, of that model is readily available for us to then bring into our reporting environment and analytics to present back to the business and start to do some some further analysis on. OK, so with that being the case, um, that sums up us looking at um, machine learning, sorry, from a um, from a Power BI perspective. OK, what I would like to move on to next um, is a look at machine learning um, again as somebody touched on briefly earlier with, within the questions from a external or alternative tools perspective. So this is where we're going to introduce um, two new tools, um, both based around um, Python. Um, but we have one tool which um, hopefully some of you are familiar with, and if you're not currently, I would definitely recommend um, that you that you add this to your tool set. It's a tool called Anaconda. 
Now, Anaconda um, basically has over 25 million users worldwide. It's currently open source, um, but it's it's for me personally, I would agree that it's the easiest way to perform any Python or R data science and machine learning on a single machine. Um, it's basically um, a development environment. And then we're going to use a um, a machine learning uh, module from a from a gentleman called Moiz Ali, um, which is called PyCarrot. Again, open source. Um, it's a low code machine learning library in Python that allows us to very quickly go from preparing data to deploying um, our machine learning model. OK, so what I'm going to do is again very briefly um, give a quick look at where we can get those products from. OK, so you would just look at uh, Anaconda. And again, I can provide all of the links. We would go to the Anaconda website. And it would have been better if I had gone to uh, the actual home page. So let me just revert that back out. So when you go to the Anaconda homepage, uh, you're looking for the Anaconda individual edition, which you can download for free. Uh, currently ships with Python um, 3.8. And I recommend that you download that and install that um, onto, onto your system ready for use. Now, I won't go through that process currently uh, because it is just installing um, an executable file, selecting um, the location that you want to install, and then the installer will do the rest for you. Now, once you have um, once you once you've done that, you'll be presented with with this option here, which is Anaconda. OK, and you have um, you can use Anaconda from a prompt um, or you can use um, the Anaconda Navigator. So what I'll show you first and foremost, again, very briefly, because you probably won't need to spend too much time here. Um, but Anaconda ships with um, a very nice user interface which those that are not familiar with terminals or or, or, or green screens, um, you can actually use this UI um, to see what Anaconda has loaded onto your system in terms of your development environment. And if I just to the navigator, so we can see that with through the Anaconda navigator, we the different applications that are available to us. So again, for data science, the likes of Jupyter Notebook, um, an IDE called, called Spider, which hopefully Time allowing, I'll show you very briefly. Um, R Studio, PyCharm, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I would I would recommend it if you're not too familiar with um, the command prompt to use the navigator um, to go through and to, and to start your session. But what I will show you today will be based on the command prompt. Okay. So with that being the case, we will go to our Anaconda environment and we'll go to Anaconda prompt. OK, so this gives us um, a green screen whereby we're currently in an environment which is called is, which is called base. Now, what you can do if you want to have multiple environments on your local machine is you can type um, activate. And in this case, um, you can we can put in our environment name, which potentially could be data science. Now, once you hit enter on this command, you'll notice that you're now in a new environment which is called data science. Now imagine this as like I say a, a new a new environment or a new folder within your system whereby you're going to load your um, your modules um, up with the likes of um, PyCarrot. OK, so as we said before, PyCarrot is an open source library uh, which is freely available to be used um, for for machine learning within a Python environment. So to do this, we use very familiar commands, which is pip install um, PyCarrot, and we hit enter. Now I believe this is already installed on this machine. So it will go through and say that all of the um, requirements are already satisfied, but on a machine where PyCarrot isn't currently installed, that might take a few moments of time. So just be aware of that. Now, once this has completed, in this in this new environment, we have PyCarrot installed. So you notice there we had a couple of steps, one to create a new environment, and then we loaded PyCarrot, um, which is our open source library that we're going to use for machine learning in Power BI into that environment. Now, as far as the green screen uh, or, or the terminal um, or command prompt is uh, is used here, we're done with it for now. We can go back over to uh, Power BI and what I will do in this example is probably create um, 
a new Power BI. Uh, to, actually, let's go to options and settings first. OK, so let's go back into Power BI. We're going to go to options and settings. Um, in this environment, we're going to go to options and we're going to make sure that Power BI is ready to run Python scripts. OK, so in our global settings on the left hand side here, we have an option which is Python scripting. OK, now mine is already is already set up for my environment, but what you would do is to detect a Python home directory, you would need to go to other because we've just created a new Python environment with Anaconda and then we would set a Python home directory. Now, in this case, I've installed um, Anaconda into a folder called business intelligence tools, and if I just scroll through, you'll notice that we're looking at our Anaconda free uh, install folder. We're looking at the environments that I previously mentioned to you, and we're looking at the environment which we created specifically for this task called data science. So once you've browsed to that location, all you need to do is hit OK. And Power BI at that point is now set up for you to start working with Python and particularly PyCarrot within Power BI. So what we want to do is get a new file a new Power BI file. And in, in this example, we're going to use a slightly uh, different data set. Some of you may be fam familiar with a data set called um, the IRIS data set, which is a popular uh, machine learning data set which is used to categorize uh, different IRIS flowers into different um, categories based on uh, petal length, petal width, uh, sepal length and sepal um, width. So to do this, we're going to use again a text CSV um, file for this. And we're going to look at a file called Iris. And now this data set, which I'll show you briefly in a moment, um, as I mentioned, we have a sepal length, a sepal width, a petal length and a petal width. And we also have a species. OK, now again, um, in an effort to save time, I'm just going to load this data directly in. But as I mentioned, please do when you are loading data, as I'm sure the majority of you are already aware, please do make sure you transform your data and use uh, the appropriate data types. OK, I'm just going to load the column species just so we can see the different types of species that we have uh, within this data. And you, you'll notice that there's three types um, of species available to us. So an iris tosa, a versicolor and a virginica. Now what we're going to do is we're going to plot this information out and we're going to look to use a scatter graph to do that. OK, now within our scatter graph, we're going to look to plot. Um, sorry, our species as our legend. OK, and we're going to go for petal width as our X axis and sepal length as our Y axis. Now it's, it's, it's worth noting that Power BI um, chooses to sum the information that we're providing it. So we do want to recognize that we don't want this information summarized. OK, now you'll notice that we have our three different categories of information. So our three different species, the Iris Tosa, Iris Versicolor and Iris Virginica all being displayed um, differentiated by colors on our scatter on our scatter plot. Now this is our information that we already have labels against, so we already know what this um, what this information should look like. Um, so again, in an effort to to save time for this demonstration, I'm going to load um, a version of this of this data which doesn't have the species column within it. Okay, so we don't have any classifications against this CSV that I'm just about to load up for you now. So this is uh, very cleverly named Iris no label. OK, and we'll open this data set. And again, as I mentioned, we'll notice that we have the same information. So sepal length, sepal width, petal length, petal width, but we don't we no longer have a species column. OK, so we're going to load up this information. And at this moment in time, this is where we're going to start to apply some Python. OK, so what we're going to do is right click on the table, going to look to edit the query. 
Now, again, generally what we would do at this moment in time is go to transform and run a Python script. So I'll show you um, what this Python script um, would look like. Um, but again, with, with Power, Power BI being how it has been for me um, today, I'm probably going to just use the advanced editor to apply this step shortly after. So all we need to do is type in from Pi carrot. So we're calling our Pi carrot um, open source library, and we're going to use a function um, within that library called clustering, and we're going to import all of the data which we're providing, and we're going to put that into a data set, um, which we will say will be the information presented back from the cluster. So using get cluster um, the data set and what we're going to do as we as we mentioned um, previously we know that we have three different values available to us for um, for species so what we're trying to identify by running this data through pi carrot is the representation of those species so that's that those three species translate to be three different clusters of information that we're trying to retrieve um, back from pi carrot in a predictive fashion now out of the box pi carrot will apply four clusters oh sorry four clusters if you don't choose an option but we are going to define the number of clusters to be equal to three because that's what we're trying to achieve, okay? And then we just close that function. Now, as I mentioned um, earlier, because Power BI is being slightly temperamental with me today, you would normally just press OK here. Um, but for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm going to cancel that and add in, sorry, add in um, a step in the advanced editor. Okay. Uh, as I mentioned previously, your step would just be added in here and applied. I'm just going to add a step that I've done previously to ensure that this translates into what we're expecting. OK, we give it a moment for the Python script um, to be executed and we are now presented um, just when this finishes off loading. With the data set um, and the table. What we want to do. Is hopefully just expand. So we've just expanded now the underlying table after it's been run through our pie carrot module, and we notice that we have a new column of information, which is a cluster. Okay, so what pie carrot is doing for us in two lines of two lines of, of Python um, script is applying predicted clusters to the underlying information. So separating that information out into different species. Okay, so at this point we can um, just ensure that our data types are set correctly. So for these columns, uh, actually we can do that in a moment. So we can just go to home and close and apply. So this again will just refresh um, the underlying data and present you back. You'll notice on the right hand side we don't have our new column just yet. But magically after being run through uh, the Power Query Python stepped, we now have a new column called cluster. Now, what I will do is just briefly go into um, this table. Yeah, it looks like uh, actually. I just want to make sure the data types are set correctly um, for these columns. Yep, so they are they are being reflected as, as decimals, which is perfect. If you do run through this demonstration, then please do ensure that your data types are being returned as as decimals. OK, so now, as I mentioned, we have um, our, our, our new machine learning trained um, data set, which we're now going to bring into a visualization. OK, so what we want to do, because we're doing a comparison now of our 
previously already labeled data with the data that we've just ran through um, PyCarrot. So I'm going to set up another um, scatter plot, and what we're going to do is set this information up in exactly the same way. So rather than the, the column labeled species, we're going to use our new column, which is cluster as our legend. We're going to use um, petal width as our X axis. And um, always remember to make sure that information is not being summarized. And we're going to go in and use our sepal length as our Y axis. Again, ensuring that the information is not being um, summarized. Now, as we can see, this looks pretty accurate, right? I mean, we have, if you know, if you look in the bottom left hand corner, all of our iris cetosis, again, in our in our in our predicted new data set, our new model, we have all of our iris cetosis. If we look at our, our blue here um, as well, we can see that all of our iris versa colors are pretty evenly matched up. I mean, we have this one here, which is out, and this one here, which is out, because we can see that they're orange in this model. Um, but you can you'll notice that they align pretty, pretty, pretty um. Uh, the prediction is, is pretty good against it. And similarly here for our third cluster, the Iris um, Virginica, or in this instance, cluster two, we notice that we only have a few which are incorrectly clustered. You can see them here in, in blue. So what we've just done there is we've ran our, um, our data, unlabeled, unclassified, through PyCarrot in, in Power BI in two lines of code. And we can see that the output is 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 actually really quite accurate. Now again, in this instance, if you added more data or you had um, this was running against a, a SQL Server data source or or a similar data source whereby you were refreshing your Power BI data model in this way, that information because it's a Power Query step would just run through and refresh, and the predictions would come through uh, in a very similar manner. So what we've done there is go through. Um, two areas of where we can use machine learning in Power BI. One way being through um, Power BI in the service and the other by making the machine learn and, I, and knowing that no machines were actually harmed in the making of this webinar. Um, we've also used uh, PyCarrot and um, the Anaconda in, environment to manage um, PyCarrot and, and put that into Power BI. Now, what I'll leave you with is that you can take this further. So you, you're now, um, this is very much an introduction to two concepts of machine learning within within Power BI, but the world really is your oyster. So I would recommend that you do go out there and do some more research on the likes of, of PyCarrot and start to set these these models up because you, as you've just noticed, we've walked through this in the in the last 50 minutes and and presented back two fairly accurate um, machine learning models within within Power BI at um, quite a bit of pace. Uh, as I mentioned previously, um, I can share share these resources um, with you all in the future. Um, do go over to Anaconda and install that on, on your system. Uh, as always, the Microsoft site is a fantastic um, place to go through and, and learn information on Power BI. There's a there's a whole suite of documents that are available um, for you to go through um, to get knowledge on. And also I would recommend if you don't read um, these, these websites and blogs already to look at KD Nuggets and towards datascience.com. Uh, very much data science driven um, the blogs and, uh, and, and, the, and the like there. Um, so with that being said, thank you everybody for, for your time and attention. Um, I hope that we've all learned something together as a community. And I'd like to open up the floor for, for any questions. Okay. Well, thank you for an amazing session. I've learned a lot. It's actually very impressive. But I think it's very short on method now. Quite in the course yourself. Thank so, you very much. I, it's it's a bit of a struggle to hear. Um, sorry, um, I don't know if it's the headset or not. The struggle to hear all of the words there. Um, but it's been a pleasure to be here. So, oh, any any questions? Any questions from the audience? Okay, uh, Leon. Thanks a lot. I've been also trying to follow along with some of what you are doing and so. Okay, there's a question. Uh, uh, Temida, you have a question. Um, hello, Liam. Hi there. Yeah, um, I, first, I want to first say thank you very much for this presentation. I think You're very well. um, I really like the part of using the um, data flow because I'm actually used to writing the outcoded machine learning code on Jupyter. So I think I'll try this. 
Yeah, oh, fantastic. And, yeah, really, yeah, thanks. Thanks a lot for this. Thanks a lot. No problem at all. Um, like I say, using using data flows, um, it's basically an ETL process with Power Query, um, which takes your data and it is stored under the hood on um, on an Azure data lake. Um, so it's it's really a beneficial way of in, of introducing um, reusable machine learning because a data flow can be consumed across the whole business. Once it's in place, um, it's consumable by um, whoever whoever needs it as such. So very much a, a, a widely available available and reusable data source that if you can apply your machine learning models um, into this environment can potentially be quite powerful. Oh, thanks. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, what I was also trying to chip in, uh, like a bit of a request. Uh, so uh, I said I was really trying to follow along and um, yeah, I understand that. <laughs> I can't catch up with your pace because, uh, you know, <laughs> I look at the screen, I try to do some of what you've done and you, you know. So my request is, is it possible for us to get like the presentation slide? I hope there is nothing too confidential that you can share. Uh, well, yeah, yeah well, I could, what I can do is, um, is I can send across uh, the slide pack, that's fine. Um, also, as this session's been recorded, then please do um, watch it back as well. Um, obviously, we have to move through this information at quite a lot of pace because of, we've only got an hour to cover quite a large and, and complex um, and complex topic. Um, but hopefully, as an introductory session, um, this should get you started on the, in the right lines to, um, to use in machine learning within Power BI. Great. Thanks a lot. And, uh, any other questions from people in the house? I'm going to start calling names if, <laughs> if no one is volunteering. <laughs> yeah, yes, sir. Yes, uh, your okay, question. Uh, uh, my question is after building your model, how do you use it in the, in the organization? How do you implement the model that you have built? Yeah, so I think there's I think there's two ways to look at this. One is um, what do we want to achieve by implementing this model? So if you're going down the route of self-service analytics, so this is whereby you're giving the data to users to make their own um, reports and analysis on, then something like either using the data flows or creating a data set, which obviously every time your data set is is refreshed, your your machine learning model will update the the, the relevant information. So even even if it's old data or new data, because it's part of Power Query, it will still pass through um, it will then be translated into the, the, the predictive element of the machine learning model. So it just becomes available to the business in, in the same way that your data sets are currently. So if you want to do this in self-serve and, and give it to the users, and as I mentioned, all of the columns that we viewed are available to be selected and brought into visualizations, um, the same as any other column. And if you're going to be doing or providing reports to the business on, on, on these predictions, then again, you would just do the same thing in terms of um, bringing that information into a visualization um, and then presenting it back to the business. So it becomes available um, to the business in the same way that your existing data is. That's probably the best way to answer that. Okay, thank you. So I have one more question. Is it, is it a, a better way, a more, automated way for you to using power bi to get some um, the columns you should get because if you're writing the articles there are some steps you can use but is there a way you can do that with power bi and in what sense what do you mean um to automate the columns that you can get okay so you have a list of columns let's say your organization the data you put up have up to maybe 100 columns you can't say you want to go through maybe each column maybe, say maybe a way you could machine code select the columns for you or tell you those that will give you the best or the most results or something. So can you do that? Not really, not 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 currently. What you what you can do, and if time is permitting, what what I can hopefully show you very very quickly is a way to profile your data in an automated way. It's outside of Power BI, um, but if you're happy, I can just show you briefly how that how that looks. All right. But you can still see uh, my screen. Yes. 
Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to return to the green screen that we had for for Anaconda. Um, and I mentioned there's there's, there's some other um, tools which get installed as part of Anaconda, the Anaconda, Anaconda installation. One of those is a tool called Spider, and you can launch it from within the command prompt in Anaconda by just typing Spider if I was in my base environment. So I'm just going to move back over to um, my base environment by typing activate base. Um, and you'll notice again that we're back in base and then we'll just launch Spider. Now what this will do, it will launch um, a predefined, um, either basically a development environment, particularly for, um, for Python. Um, and within this, we're going to use a library called um, Pandas. So again, Pandas is an open source uh, data data science library, um, and there's a really strong um, component within within Pandas, which is a profiling tool. Now, once this loads in in just a moment, I'll just go through very briefly because I know that we're under a time constraint. What the output of um, of running some data through uh, Pandas will look like. Hopefully, I still got this open, um, which I do. So again, hopefully you can all see my screen. Yes, let's go again. Perfect. So you'll notice here that I've imported um, pandas and, and give it an alias. We're looking at um, actually the machine yeah. learning data that we just put through, and we're 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 actually creating a profile report, um, and then we're 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 exporting this profile um, to this environment um, based on the based on the information. Uh, so what I would just do is navigate over to to this environment to, to run this. You would just press um, F5 and it would generate a new file. But again, in, in an effort to um, to run through in time, um, I would just. OK, we do have to do it because I've deleted the file since the last time I did this, so we just hit F5. Uh, data frame object has no. Pandas. Okay, data frame. Uh, it's going to be one of those days today, unfortunately, um, where nothing wants to run for me. So what I will do, rather than spend again the time to to go through that, I will just briefly show you what the output of that would have looked like. Um, so if we look at this website, for example, once you run your information through, as we just mentioned, um, what the, what can be generated is a HTML report of the information within um, within that, sorry, within that um, within the data set. So it looks at the number of variables, any missing information, duplicate rows, um, the size of the data. Uh, and again, that's not the best one to give you the output. Uh, OK, perfect. This is what I'm trying to show you. So what it will go through is it will go through and look at each of your columns and give you some profile information on those columns. So telling you if, the, if it's distinct, any, if there's any correlations within that data, um, and it will highlight a sample of the information within within that column. So the, basically the, the quick way of answering your question is you can run um, a pandas profiling against your data set and that will identify any correlations within the underlying data, any columns that, that should be of use to you. And that could be a quick way um, to identify, especially from a correlations perspective, key information within within your data set. So I would say to if you haven't already to try and explore that as a potential semi automated way of understanding your data very quickly. Oh, thank you. That's, that's a question. Okay, uh, hi, based on what you just showed us in Spider, I, I think I have a question. So uh, it's always this forever, never ending question about the uh, IDs to use. So which yeah. is your own favorite? Uh, since uh, you work in the same data space, I'm guessing it's better I follow your steps. So which <laughs> is your favorite ID to use? Um, so for me at the moment, it is Spider. 
Um, so I, I did previously use uh, PyCharm for quite a, for quite a while. Um, I haven't really spent a lot of time in Jupyter Notebooks, to be quite honest with you. I know that that's a lot of people's firm favourite, um, but most of my analysis um, is generally done um, in, in, in Power BI um, or within something like um, with it within Spider, so I don't really follow through the traditional um, Jupyter notebook um, and that analysis phase as such. So I would say try Spider. Um, it's been it's been really good for my workflow um, when it works when we're not doing presentations, <laughs> which is always the way. But um, yeah, I would definitely recommend Spider. I would like to know your opinion on uh, since you've used Spider and PyCharm. I currently use PyCharm and I have Spider because it comes with Anaconda. What in your own What's your, what's your preference for spider over Python? Like what the difference you noticed and why? Um, it, it just, it just really just fits my, my workflow. Um, what you can do is you can, you can quickly um, put together visualizations, which can be seen in spider. Um, you can, you can see dependencies um, within, within, within modules, within spider. Um, everything has another way of viewing within, within the same tool, um, which for me just aided my workflow. Um, alongside Anaconda, a pie charm, we just never really, um, it's like a marriage where you never really um, <laughs> connect, you end in divorce and um, and Spider came along and it was, um, it's been, it's been good since then. I'm going to try Spider in yes. the <laughs> <laughs> uh, If I any, what about the questions we normally ask? Yeah, so um, since there are no more questions, so, so you know, thank you for an amazing session. And thank you for having me. So, uh, yeah, so actually, um, like I mentioned, the two questions. So first of all, I want to know about your data journey, like how you started, motivation. Yeah, so I mean, my data journey has been um, not very similar to most people. So I didn't go to the university like most people do. I actually spent um, those years of my life playing um, professional football, which unfortunately didn't work out. Uh, and I actually started by doing data entry in the, in the data space, probably um, it would have been about eight years ago now. Um, so from starting doing data entry on very much command um, line driven systems, um, I moved into SQL Server. Um, uh, SQL became the, the, the language that I, that I loved um, and interpreting data and especially the ETL of data. So I moved on to um, SSIS integration services, um, SSAS analysis services and pretty much the Microsoft data platform stack. From there, the natural progressions were to move into reporting, um, visualization, Power BI came onto the scene. Um, and since then, I, I just haven't looked back. Um, so it's been it's been a never ending um, continual journey of, of learning and enhancement. Um, and uh, and uh, it's, it's, it's been great. The second question, so I was also asked, so, also asking, so what's the learning part you give to someone that is new to Power BI? Um, the learning path for somebody new to Power BI, I would I would say dive in. Um, so as I mentioned before, we have a community user group, which is Microsoft Power BI UK. And through my business, Onyx Data, we also hold a monthly visualization challenge whereby we give a data set out to the community. And the community have that month to go interpret, analyze and visualize and present the data back. Um, now, with this challenge, we offer a £50 Amazon voucher and some data visualization books to the winner um, and data visualization books to the, to the additional top four runners up. But what happens within this community is that people uh, help each other. So whilst you might not um, be where you want to be in Power BI currently, everybody was there at some point. So everybody is very much constructive in terms of feedback so one of the things i would say is is join a community of like-minded people where you where you can learn um secondly is challenge yourself so to be continually learning um, and as i mentioned start to build projects based on open freely available um data so this can be the data we've ran through today is is open source and available for you to pull into Power BI and start visualizing straight away. Um, or you can just type in free data um, on, on Google and, and you'll be you'll see a plethora of data available. So I would really say um, join like-minded people 
um, continually learn as much as possible, but also whilst you're learning, put projects back out to, to, to the world as such. So LinkedIn is a great tool for this. Um, you can have featured projects because what you're then doing is demonstrating that you that you're um, a, that you're learning and that you're actually comfortable with putting information out that, that people can see about the work you're doing. Um, and then outside of that, as I mentioned, my journey has been continual learning um, throughout the last six or seven years. Um, so having an appetite for learning, especially with something like Power BI, which, which does get complicated, the more advanced you want to get, um, then I would just say continually be learning and then you're only going to progress. There's no way to, to move backwards if you're continually learning. Thanks a lot for that. Uh, someone put a question in the chat box. I hope we've not. I know it's one hour. I don't know your your plan. Are you able to take one more question? So we don't. Yeah, need of to... course I can. Okay, that's that's so, fine. Okay, this question is. Uh, I'm reading it from the chat box. I was also trying to share the screen about London Power BI user group. I wanted to post it, but for some reasons the chat is no longer letting me post. So, no it's so just 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 on that note, just so you know, um, it's not the London Power BI user group. It's the UK, um, the UK Power BI user group. Better then. So I would search for that. So, uh, Ido, your question. Do you want to ask it, or shall I read it? Ido, Daniel. Okay, maybe I'll read this question. <laughs> so this, I wanted to ask about path for someone new to Power BI. That's the way. Okay. That's the question I just, I just asked. And yes, the video will be made available on YouTube by tomorrow. Okay. Uh, so you say UK Power BI user group. Right? Yeah, that's the one. So we're on we're on LinkedIn. We're also on uh, Meetup and Microsoft communities as well. Um, and as I mentioned, there's a, there's a, approximately two and a half thousand of us within that group. Um, it's very much an interactive group where everybody's freely available to be on hand to help. And I would I would recommend that you all, um, if you can, like I say, there's um, the date. The, the, the data DNA data set challenge, which is free to take part in every month, and we have prizes available for for people that do win. So if you are on LinkedIn, um, then just search for the hashtag data DNA um, and, and and come and join us. We'd love to have you. Thanks a lot, and uh, it's a pleasure having you once again. Oh, sorry, uh, there's still one more question. Sorry, the last. So, um, the last question is where those. So this will give the those not specific to Power BI, but those starting out and advice. Maybe what tool they should start with. The newbies in the field. Oh, sorry. What tool they should start with? Is, was that? No, no, no. The advice you give to newbies starting out in the field. Not specifically Power BI, or but those that want to start out. Okay, sorry, I'm, I'm struggling to hear, but I think the question is, what advice would I give to somebody trying to start out in the data start industry? Out. Is that good? Yes. Yeah. OK, yes. so um, what I, again, what, what I would say is it, it doesn't matter really what tool that you're using. I would say that if you can, if you can research what tools and what skills are currently required in the industry. So for this, it would probably be Python, um, SQL, the likes of Power BI or Tableau. So start off with a knowledge of where you're trying to get to. So whether this is from a tool perspective uh -huh. or an area uh -huh. of uh -huh. a business, so you yeah, have data analysis, you have uh, data visualization, uh, you have data engineering, so all different aspects of, of what's broadly called data science nowadays. Um, so I would say start off knowing where you want to get to and then from there work backwards. So pick people that you aspire to be or the industry leading and I wouldn't say I would say um, look at their journey and, and what they've done to achieve it and generally it's a case of going away, learning, whilst you're learning building projects so that people can see that you're that you're actively um but trying to progress and then by creating projects especially on linkedin linkedin's a fantastic platform i can't say this enough is that if you can start to get your information out network with people and continue to learn then you the things will fall in place um in in the, in the data space as long as as long as you're hungry so that, that again those are the three things really that i would say learn network um and and whilst you're learning create projects 
that because what what happens with projects just so I can just so I can um, explain what what building projects gives you um, because if you're just learning you don't have work experience within within data just yet but by creating projects you're creating work experience at the same time um, so it's a fantastic way to get your to get your foot in the door. Oh, thank you so much once again. For um, I've posted a link to the DNA the DNA challenge in the chat, so you guys should check Perfect. it out. And the UK Power BI, the Microsoft Power BI UK it's up page. Yeah. It's also available there. So um, Fantastic. thank you. Thank you again once again. Then um, are there any thank other questions? You. Sorry, the group in LinkedIn. What is the group again? Sorry, if I forgot the data or something. That's okay. So if you want to join the oh. data DNA challenge, it's it's okay. hashtag data DNA. And if you want to join um, Microsoft Power BI UK user group, we're on uh, LinkedIn and Meetup. I think the Meetup link's been posted. But if you just search for Microsoft Power BI uh, UK user group on LinkedIn as well, you can come and join us there as well. Thank you. So thanks a lot. If I let me know when to end the oh, session. Oh, the session. Oh, the case is session. So, uh, so thanks a lot, Leon. Okay. So thanks a lot, Leon. It's been a very pleasurable moment with you, and uh, uh, I'm sure a lot of people will join the links. So we'll try to remind them to also join the challenge. The challenge is always going on. Not like there's time limits to when to join. No. So, so that we do one every you. month. Well, every, every month. month. Um, yeah. Every month is a new challenge. Oh. Yeah. So thanks a lot. Thanks, Leon. Have a Thank night. you, everyone. Okay. Bye. Okay, bye. Thanks for having me. Stay safe. Thank yeah. you, Leon. Thank you. Stay bye -bye. safe too. Bye bye. Thank you. Appreciate you.